Hi everyone, it's Anna Wheaton here from Nudge Nudge Ink Ink. I am doing part two of my black magic technique videos. I already have published one which is using white embossing powder and Versamark. Uh, this one is a little bit different because it uses our white craft ink and our watercolour pencils. So I'll show you how it's done. I started with a piece of black cardstock. So you do want black, hence the name Black Magic, because it's going to be the biggest contrast to your white. This is 11 centimeters by 9 centimeters, specifically 9 because I'm going to cut it into three even pieces to fit on the front of a card. The stamp I used is Butterfly Brilliance. This is a almost a background stamp, so it's one full stamp. Some people have bought it and cut it apart so that they've got individual butterflies. It has a die which cuts it out as well, so that makes it really quick to cut out a bunch of, um, of um, butterflies. We're just going to use the stamp, and I don't even need to take it out of its case. I'm using Stampin' Up! Craft Ink. Um, craft different from our ink colors. So this is the Whisper White and I want you to see, to take note that it's a pigment in ink. A pigment ink will sit on your paper rather than soak into it. So it's a little different. So I'm going to open it and I'm just going to pat it onto my stamp. You'll see the difference too when you go to clean this because it will um, it's sort of almost a bit sticky. It uh, doesn't clean up as quickly. Now, this is extra juicy. I'm noticing. You, I'm actually going to move it over a little bit. I was saying I don't need to take it out, but I haven't quite inked this little bit of this butterfly because the edge of the stamp case is getting in the way. But that's life. There we go. Now I can get that bit. Oh, now it'll be interesting to see how this goes because it is very juicy. I may start this video again. <laughs> okay, and then I'm just going to take my piece of cardstock and just drop it on there like so. And then grab a piece of scrap paper, just scrap copy paper. This is some old instructions and press them. So I'm not actually doing the traditional way around with stamping onto the paper. I'm putting the paper onto the stamp. Take away the copy paper and pull this up. There you go. Worked fine. Okay. So what you want to do is set that aside for a little while or grab your heat tool and dry it because like I said, the ink will sit on top of the paper and so it doesn't dry immediately. I'll just talk instead. What I'm going to use to color are our watercolor pencils. So these are on page 126 of the annual catalog. We actually have two packs. There's an assortment one and an assortment two. Um, assortment one has your basics like your basic black and your basic gray. So it's a good one to start with. It also has white. Um, then assortment two has a, can add on to your variety of colors. But if you are just buying your first pack, I recommend assortment one for $28. You get 13 pencils. So here they are. And it's great to have them with uh, the end at the top so that you can see what your colors are. You, so instead of the other way around with the tips, they are also written on there. So you can see each pencil has the name. And what I've gone ahead and done is given these a good sharpen. So it's worth getting a good sharp. Now get one of those ones that catches all the uh, shavings um, and you'll be set because you can just sharpen as you go. All right, so what I want to do is, I'd go for bright colors, so I wouldn't use my gray, I wouldn't use my black, I wouldn't use my brown, and of course, I don't need to use my white, but I'll just show you a little bit of the shading. 
you can pick out oh that see that one needs a sharpen you can pick out sections and color them so this has been quite juicy this ink and yet i'm already coloring on it and what i suggest you do too is once you pick a color up you can one two three four you can um do a few sections you could do your butterfly all the same color this could be an entirely pink butterfly or you can move your colors around now you can color quite light like so or you can dig in quite a bit and get a stronger color that's sort of mixing a little bit with the white because the white is not quite dry but you get the idea um, this is Calypso Coral, so I'll just show you. I'll do that side white. I can see it's smearing the ink a little. Um, uh, sorry, I'll do that side light. I'll do this side heavy. I can't talk and colour at the same time. All right, bring that closer just so that you can see the difference there. Uh, so what you do is you just keep colouring because we all know how much we love colouring until you end up with a piece that has been colored all over like so now if you recall I said I cut this in this is nine centimeters wide and I'm going to cut it into three centimeter strips that way I know that they're going to be even our trimmers are fantastic this is a, a newer style trimmer that came in a couple of years ago and the blades just last longer than the previous one and they're nice and sharp to give you a clean cut so just remember to keep them in their order when you're going to glue them so if we go back to the sample you can see that that actually sits up on the card you know about our dimensionals but you might not know about our foam adhesive sheets so these are a similar size pack to dimensionals they're the same thickness but they are a whole sheet that's just like one big square dimensional so this saves you a lot of time because I'm just going to cut a little bit off there saves you a lot of time because you don't have to put a lot of dimensionals down I'm just putting three down so I want them to be a little shorter and a little narrower than the strips because I don't want them showing out the side so I just peel off one side I stick it on and the other side remains covered that sticky is not there until I peel that off so these are on the same page as all the other adhesives in the catalogue. I then want to bring in my card base. So I've got, oh, I've got a dirty, I'm going to fold this the other way. I have scored it already because this is a thick whisper white. So I'm meant to fold it this way, indentation on the outside. I'm going to fold it the other way in the hope that I can cover that. I think I can sit these in place. Now, I'm going to want to do the first one, um, the middle one first. So if you've got grid paper, what you can do is this grid paper, for example, I have a 10 centimeter mark, all right? So if I go there, I know that this is 10 and a half. So I want to go to 5.25 with that edge right and going backwards it's far well it's actually 4.8 but um you get the idea i can space it from one end to the other Alrighty. then i want to get my middle piece make sure it's the middle one and i'm now going to eyeball it so see there's my 10 centimeter line and also down below you might want to draw a pencil line if you're not so good at eyeballing. Now I'm going. Uh, now it doesn't matter that it's moved now. <laughs> that just stuck down too soon. 
I'm going to bring that in close enough to cover that dirty mark. Okay, so you can see my wing is extending over. But there's this little gap and a little drop because I've used the dimensional the foam adhesive sheets and that one in place. You can always just put those down really gently and then when you're happy, push down. Oops, just knock my bird out. Okay, then for the middle, I've got a piece of vellum. This has been cut with the stylish shapes. So it has a stitched edge and it's going to go here so I can still see my butterflies. Now, we made this in a class, some ladies chose to put it down the bottom so that they weren't covering their butterflies. The other thing that you could do is use a um, adhesive, uh, no, acetate sheet, completely see-through. So it's just this uh, subtle shininess. I'm going to put a little bit of tape seal just in the middle because I know that that is going to be covered by my white because adhesive does show through vellum. Eyeball that to get it straight. And then I have a smaller stylish shape cut in basic white. And I'm just gonna use a happy birthday sentiment, which is from, no, it shouldn't have gone down that path. I can't remember. It's from a sentiment set that goes with the poppies. <laughs> happy birthday. Flip that over. I could add this with dimensionals if I wanted to. But you can see there, again, eyeballing it so that it fits in the middle. The other thing that you could do is get your Wink of Stella. If you don't have a Wink of Stella, you should. <laughs> it's beautiful. You can go through and add a little bit of wink. It's a brush tip glimmer pen. And you can add that to your card as well. And that just gives it a little bit of shine. So there you have it. If you wanted to also, you could add some rhinestones. I just realized I have some here. I've added them on that one. So I'll get my take your pick tool. I'm going to use the putty end and I'm going to use little rhinestones. I always like the littlest ones, more so than the big ones. And it just picks them up. I just slide them off. Let me show you. Oh, <laughs> it picks them up, doesn't let them go. Okay, so there's a putty end to it. I just push this, removing it from the plastic sheet that it's on and put it into place it's playing up on me because i'm showing you now i've got four there i want five i want an odd number okay there you have it what you can do is go through your stamp sets and see what you have that may work just as well with your craft ink to create black magic a more subtle effect i hope that was helpful and i'd love to see your creations thank you bye